السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, Hi everyone uh, Welcome to a new session from Radiology Spotter Cases And uh, in this session we will discuss uh, many of interesting cases And as usual we start as uh, the exam part And at the uh, second half of the session we will discuss these cases uh, in detail We will start now This is case number one
ओके Let's discuss these cases. The first case here, we can see that there is a, a, a evident arthropathic changes in this uh, four years old patient, female patient. This is an uh, arthropathic changes in the right knee, evident by uh, uh, irregularities and uh, cortical irregularities of uh, the opposing articular surfaces with uh, sizable joint effusion seen here. Uh, and there is also an interesting finding which is an uh, apparent enlargement of the uh, epiphyses here and these are uh, in this uh, situation in this uh, young uh, boy or young uh, child is uh, 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 the diagnostic possibility are one of two uh, uh, options the first one is uh, the uh, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis and the second one is uh, the hemophilic arthritis and as usual in this x-ray it is usually depend upon uh, the clinical but since we have no clinical history here in this spotting case but uh, uh, we can have a hint here it is a female patient so it can be exclude uh, the hemophilic arthritis because uh, the, as we know that the hemophilic arthropathy is a uh, uh, exclusively in male patient so this is uh, usually uh, a juvenile rheumatoid arthritis right hip juvenile rheumatoid arthritis so it is important to uh, read every uh, item in uh, the slide this is uh, very important before uh, especially in the exam because in the exam uh, they usually uh, put some hands in uh, the slides we uh, concentrate uh, usually upon the images alone and we don't uh, uh, concentrate uh, or take care about uh, the uh, uh, the hands or uh, the other readings in uh, the slides so it is important to see every item in uh, the slide not only the uh, 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 the image it usually uh, it uh, it needs to concentrate upon the image and any uh, uh sentences or in reading seen in uh, the slide as well so this is a, a juvenile rheumatoid arthritis of the right uh, knee joint evident by uh, the arthropathic changes seen in the right uh, uh, knee joint with enlargement and uh, 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 hypertrophy of the physis we can see here this is uh, the uh, femoral physis in comparison to the uh, left side it is uh, evidently enlarged and even the TPL physis also so this is uh, one of the characteristic features of uh, the juvenile rheumatoid arthritis and also in the hemophilic arthritis but the female uh, the female uh, gender of this patient is uh, with uh, can exclude uh, the hemophilic arthritis in this situation okay the case number two here we can see that there is a increased signal in the ACL this uh, uh, the ACL is showing increased signal in these stair images and there is a, a, some sort of a cystic lesion seen at the proximal attachment of the ACL so this is uh, uh, indicate that this is a mucoid degeneration of the ACL with ganglion cyst formation uh, the other differential diagnosis is uh, the ACL sprain usually the ACL sprain is history of trauma and there is an uh, symptoms of ACL failure and uh, the signal is much increased in the stair images than this and uh, this is not here in these situations and also the association of the uh, ganglion cyst is uh, make the diagnosis of uh, degeneration not an ACL sprain so this is uh, the mucoid degeneration with an ACL ganglion uh, cyst formation okay in this uh, case we can see this is an MRI lumbar spine we can see that there is a abnormal signal seen at uh, the uh, inferior vertebral end plate of uh, the L4 vertebrae we can see it is a low in T1 and pride signal in uh, T2 and stair we can see evident this abnormal 
maru this is maru edema signal uh, is surrounding this uh, small tiny uh, uh, lesion that is apparently a herniation of uh, the disc through uh, the vertebral in the blade so this is a small schmorl's node with uh, the surrounding edema signal this is an acute schmorl's node of the inferior l4 inferior vertebral in the blade and uh, it could be asymptomatic uh, especially in this case in uh, the acute setting because it is surrounded by marrow edema so this is an l4 acute schmorl's node okay in this uh, case or in this uh, uh, example we can see here that there is a, a disruption of the floor of the left orbit and uh, the uh, bone fragment is uh, displaced inferiorly so this is an example for uh, the blowout fracture of uh, the inferior wall or floor of the left orbit and we can see here there is a sagging of the inferior rectus and that is seen overlapping of upon the uh, floor of uh, the uh, or overriding this uh, uh, floor of the bony ridge of the uh, orbit so uh, this is uh, may suggest that there is an uh, inferior rectus entrapment and this is one of the important item to be uh, mentioned in cases of blowout fracture so this is a, a blowout fracture of the inferior wall of the left orbit associated with inferior rectus muscle entrapment okay in this case we can clearly see uh, that there is a defect here seen at the anterior wall of the urinary bladder and there is a, a fluid extravasation and in these post contrast uh, images after uh, 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 delayed uh, excretion of the contrast we can see here that the contrast is uh, seen uh, ex uh, extra extravasate uh, to the perivasical space so this is a case of urinary bladder rupture and uh, the cause is here is this uh, nail uh, metallic nail that is uh, traumatically uh, uh, introduced here in this patient uh, causing this uh, uh, focal defect in the anterior wall of the inner bladder and uh, uh, contrast extravasation this is an example for the traumatic uh, extraperitoneal uh, bladder rupture caused by uh, accidental uh, nail uh, metal nail trauma okay in these mrcp images we can see that there is a tiny cystic lesion seen at the fundus of the uh, gold bladder this tiny cystic lesion have a characteristic ring uh, distribution which is uh, 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 which is a diagnostic of the which called fundal adenomyomatosis this appearance is called fundal adenomatosis when you see a cystic uh, appearance small cystic lesions that seen uh, 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 ringly uh, uh, oriented this is uh, called uh, fungal uh, fundal adenomyomatosis adenomatosis can occur at any portion of the gold bladder but most common seen at the fundus of the uh, gold bladder this is tiny cystic appearance which is indicate or uh, the diagnosis of fundal adenomyomatosis okay in this case case number seven we can see that there is a planting here of uh, the uh, anterior inferior genoid and this is very important the uh, the inferior genoid should be pointed and there is a separation of the uh, 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 inferior margin of the genoid and if we concentrate we can see that uh, the cortex here is not present the cortex should be a signal void in uh, MRI images so it is here it is ill defined it's absent and uh, indistinct so this indicate or may suggest that there is a um, not only the labrum is avulsed it is also associated with uh, avulsion of the underlying bony uh, glenoid we can see here, here in the research the image also the bony glenoid here is defective here and this is uh, the separated uh, bony uh, fragment 
and in complementary CT we can clearly see that there is a separation of uh, the uh, uh, wing ridge of the glenoid so this is an example for osseous pankert osseous pankert is an avulsion of the anterior inferior glenoid labrum and underlying pony pony glenoid okay in this case case number eight we can see there is a transverse fractures that is passing along the base of the odontoid process we can see here that the uh, 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 these transverse fracture uh, showing non sclerotic pony margin and this is important to differentiate this uh, type of fracture from uh, the os odontodium is uh, the pony edge is non sclerotic so this is uh, usually uh, uh, seen in acute uh, setting of acute fractures and uh, also we can see here matching between uh, two fragments uh, this is indicate that this fragment is matching its parent uh, bone and this uh, transverse line is indication of a fracture line not uh, an, an accessory ossicle so this is an example for type 2 type 2 uh, uh, fracture of uh, the uh, dense or odontoid process okay in this case we can see here that there is a uh, uh, avulsion of uh, the medial pool of uh, the patella we can see here this is an avulsion of the medial pool of the patella and in this complementary uh, CT we can clearly see this is the pony fragment that is avulsion from the medial pool of the patella and also we can see that there is a lateral subluxation for the patella so this is usually one of uh, uh, the sign characteristic sign for the transient patellar dislocation and we can see here in the opposite side of the lateral but femoral condyle we can see here that there is a marrow edema and if we see here it may be small fragment seen here from uh, the medial femoral condyle so this is a characteristic for the transient patellar dislocation the patella is laterally subluxated there is a contusions from uh, that uh, media patellar pool against uh, the lateral femoral condyle so uh, it gives uh, the characteristic of uh, 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 contusion occur at this uh, site in this situation there is not only contusion there is an avulsion bony avulsion of uh, the uh, media patellar pool and also in, in the lateral femoral condyle so this is a uh, in severe setting like this so this is a case of transient patellar dislocation the diagnostic clue is the lateral subluxation the uh, injury that occur at uh, the opposing uh, articular surfaces the medial patellar pool and uh, the lateral femoral condyle okay there is a small this hemorrhage shoulder there is a cystic lesion seen at the posterior superior labrum here we this uh, cyst is adjacent to the labrum you can see here this superior labrum uh, showing a high signal traversing the labrum we can see here the posterior superior labrum and this is the high signal traversing the base of this labrum so this is an indicate of tear of the posterior superior labrum associated with a parallel cyst and this is one of the commonest site for the paralabral cyst in shoulder is the posterior superior labrum once you see here a cyst in this, this in this location you should uh, consider the possibility of uh, the posterior superior labral tear which is one of the common sites for this uh, uh, tear and paralipral cyst formation okay in this case we can see here that there is a lesion seen in the intramusc proximal femur fe proximal humeral or proximal forearm region intermuscular in location this lesion that is exhibiting a high signal in t1 and this is suppressed in uh, fat set images so this is a fat this is an example for the intermuscular proximal uh, forearm intermuscular lipoma that is seen in this situation it is uh, totally encasing this uh, artery which is uh, the radial artery so this is a proximal uh, a forearm uh, intermuscular a lipoma 
okay in this case case number 12 we can see here there is a well-defined uh, lesion that is persistently dark in all bulb sequences this location is very important this is uh, the characteristic site of attachment or insertion for the uh, uh, teres uh, minor muscle we can see here this is uh, the supraspinatus this is the infraspinatus and this is a teres minor muscle so this uh, uh, persistent dark signal seen at the insertional site of the tendon of the teres minor muscle is uh, represent, uh, rep representing a uh, calcification so this is a calcification along with the teres uh, uh, minor muscle this is an example for calcific uh, tendonitis for the teres minor calcific tendonitis is in, uh, uh, is uh, common in the supraspinatus uh, but in teres minor it is uh, extremely rare in this situation this is uh, an example for uh, the uh, teres minor calcific tendonitis again this is one of the rarest site for uh, the calcific tendonitis in shoulder in this case we can see there is an um, uh, advanced arthropathic changes involving the uh, midfoot uh, joints with a severe destruction and surrounding bony uh, fragments formations this is uh, the uh, complementary x-ray we can see that there is a sclerosis of uh, the surrounding bony boundaries all these features uh, are uh, uh, in uh, favor of uh, the charcot arthropathy the location which is uh, the midfoot there is no ulcer formation and there is uh, uh, multiple surrounding bone fragments and there is sclerosis of uh, the surrounding uh, bony boundaries all these features are characteristic for charcot arthropathy in this case we can see here there is a diastasis of the acromioclavicular joint and there is disruption of the acromioclavicular ligament and in this uh, uh, image we can see here that there is also disruption of uh, the ligament that is extending between the crocoid process and the clav clavicle which is called crococlavicular ligament and this is one of the important features in a chromic clavicular ligament injury to indicate that this stage is a stage 3 a chromic clavicular ligament injury and this is indicative for the surgical uh, management for this patient in this x-ray we can see there is a diastasis of this acromioclavicular ligament uh, joint and there is increase in the distance between the crocoid and uh, the clavicle in comparison to this side so again these features are diagnostic for stage 3 uh, or grade 3 acromioclavicular ligament acromioclavicular joint injury in this last case or final case we can see here there is a marked compression of these vertebrae this is five four three two one this is l1 vertebrae this is marked compression of uh, the uh, and reduced height of l1 vertebrae and there is a persistent dark signal seen in t1 and t2 signal within the vertebrae this is an in this situation usually uh, suggestive this is an uh, air formation so this is an example for uh, the a vacuum phenomena within uh, the uh, collapsed vertebrae is called comel disease which is uh, occur in uh, osteoporosis osteoporotic patient with advanced osteoporosis and presence of air formation within uh, the uh, uh, l1 vertebrae is indication for the comel disease so this is an l1 comel disease uh, thank you very much. I hope this, these were an interesting cases and uh, have a fit for everyone. Thank you.